Lord's name. We do give him glory today. We thank God for all the many blessings. Thank him for you joining in with us. We pray that something will be said and done by the unction of the Holy Spirit. That will aid you on your journey as a Christian. But if you do not know the Lord, we pray this will be your day of salvation. We thank God today. How many know it till I die?
Hallelujah. Our scripture this morning can be found in Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5, and I will begin reading at verse 15. Amen. And the scriptures reads, it says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of of God. I have read Ephesians chapter 5 verses 15 through 21. Will you pray with me? Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you this morning. First God, before we ask you for anything, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, because you have been so good to us, God. Yes, God. And God, because you love us and because you saved us and because you delivered us, God, there is no way we can live without you, yeah, Father. God. God, we just want to tell you thank you, God, for grace and for mercy. Yes. We tell you thank you, God, because everything we have needed, your mighty hand has already provided. Yes. God, we just want to tell you thank you for keeping us down through another week, Father. God, you didn't allow the enemy to have his way, God, and for that we want to tell you thank you. God, we just want to tell you thank you for waking us up this morning and giving us a mind to praise yes, your name, Father. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to come together with our brothers and sisters in Christ and lift up your holy name. And God, because we are here, Father, we made up our mind that we are going to push past everything we may feel and everything we may experience and everything.
You don't have a means of by which you go and, and, and feel safe. You gotta have a, a, a comfort. You gotta have something that, that lets me know that even though I'm going in the midst of danger, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, David said, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thou art There is a day I love to hear. 
redeeming the time. The hymn writer once wrote, time is filled with swift transition. God on earth unmoved can stand. You must build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. This statement and the following verses of the song pointed out the need to redeem the times that we live in. The essence of the statement does not mean that time can be brought or paid for. But while it has nothing to do with the quantity of time, it has everything to do with the quality and the making the most of the opportunity and turning it into the best advantage since none of it can be recalled if missed. Mm -hmm. That's a whole mouthful right there, Brother Little. But I, I say it, that to say this, whatever is past you, you can't go get it back. Mm -hmm. Whatever is lost, whatever is back there, 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 there are many that try to, to go back and fix the well, rights and wrongs of your past. But whatever is in your past, that's what it is. Yes, yes. You will spend a lifetime trying to figure out the, how to undo some stuff that's been done. I like what the Apostle Paul said. He told us in the book of Philippians, forgetting those things which are behind. I press yes. toward the mark of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Mm -hmm. So when I, I look at it, I, I've got to understand that it's already tough enough for me to press forward. I've got to let go of my past and look forward to what's going on in my future. Yes. How many can tell yourself, self, the future looks a whole lot brighter than my past. Yes. How many can look back and understand there's some stuff back there to forget about. Yeah. But every now and then, the enemy will come and try to remind me yeah. of how much of a failure that I've been. Uh -huh. But I've got to let him know that even in the midst of all my past, I thank God for the blood. Yeah. I thank him that the blood covers a multitude of sin. Yeah. So in my understanding, when the, the apostle Paul was talking about forgetting those things which are behind, doesn't mean the enemy won't bring it back to your mind every now and then of what you used to do, of where you used to go, of how things used to be in your life. You've got to understand I'm better than that. Yeah. How many look at yourself and say, I thank God that I can say today I'm better than that. Yeah. Amen. I'm not going to let my past ruin what my future is going to be like. Yeah. Young people, don't, 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 don't get me wrong here. You got, you got times you're going to make some mistakes. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Nobody's perfect. And I often say that if you find a perfect place, you better get away from it because you end up messing it up. Somewhere along the line, we're imperfect people. Yeah. Going for an imperfect world. Yeah. Trusting a perfect God. Yeah. How many thank God today yeah. that I may not be perfect, but I trust someone yeah. that he perfect in all of his ways. Yeah. So I'm grateful to understand that the Lord gives me every moment and I've got to know I've got to make the best of my, my time. Uh -huh. I, I can't get to a point of trying to, to recoup what I've lost. But if I find myself doing that, i got to tell myself, Sam, forget about what's back there and press on. Yeah. The Apostle Paul, the writer of this epistle, writes to the church in Ephesus. With the general theme of Christian unity, in this epistle, he writes to them admonishing or urging them to walk together. And don't forget the benefits of knowing the will of God. Uh -huh. See, we don't want to talk about sometimes, you know, the church has sometimes a mandate of doing what Baptists do or what, what Methodists do or, or what other, other denominations are doing. But you've got to understand what only pleases the Lord is accomplishing or doing his will. How many know what I'm talking about? First thing I've got to understand is my purpose. And my purpose is yoked up with his will. I, I wish I had a witness in here. See, sometimes it's good to shout and have a good time, but you've got to know why you do what you do. How many know what I'm talking about? 
that when I accomplish his will, I'm leaving the mandate for my purpose. So when I look at this, he, he urged them to know the will of God concerning them. When he pins this epistle to them, there were those whom the Lord had called out of darkness into his marvelous light. And their light was beginning to be dim. They would go back and do some of the things of their past because they haven't been completely delivered. Uh -huh. So he reminds them, this is what you used to do. Uh -huh. This is where you used to be. But for you to be unified, uh -huh. you've got to understand, you've got to walk the way the Lord wants you to walk. Yeah. You've got to follow the leader. I don't know about you, but every, everybody in here has got a leader in your life. Uh -huh. You've got somebody that, that you look up to, that you're following today. And I believe Jesus puts it so poignantly when he talks about the kingdom. For that to be a kingdom, there first must be a king. For that must be a king, there has to be dominion. Uh -huh. For that makes the kingdom. So when the kingdom exists, that means you're following the leader. Yeah. That, that when it comes down to it, brothers and sisters, we have gotten so so used to, to following man's man that we don't forgot about what the Lord is requiring out of our life. So when he looks at them, he tells them, even as Gentiles, you walked according to the course of the world. As Gentiles, you did what Gentiles do. That's outside the will of God. Yeah. But once you come into the understanding and have been born again, you can't go back to looking at the things that you normally did. Because oftentimes when you find yourself doing that, you're not being delivered when you want to go back and do those things. Yeah. I know I wouldn't get too many yeah. amens in here. Because sometimes it, it, it begins to help us to understand that we may be a part of the church, but the church is on the inside of us. Yeah. And wherever we go, we are a witness for the church. Uh -huh. Because the church is in us. Yeah. You can't be a witness of a building. You can't be the witness of a building because the building is rock and mortar. The brick is wood and, and stubble. This stuff is going to decay. But the church, the church as we know it, is established upon the statement, Thou art the Christ, uh -huh. the Son of the living. I'm very really glad you can call on the Lord today yeah. and know where your help comes from. Yeah. That's why when the Apostle Paul pinned them even to walk worthy of their vocation to, to do the things that God has brought, brought to their understanding. Their acceptance of salvation through Christ Jesus brings them to the pinnacle of every savory moment and utilizes them for the benefit of winning the laws. That's why when you look at the 15th verse of this chapter, he says, see there that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. And when you look at that, when he yokes up the wisdom, and when he yokes up the understanding of fools, there's a, there's a book in the book of Matthew, the 25th chapter, verses 1 through 13. Jesus outlines what a wise man does and what a foolish person does. He outlines that in the parable of the five, ten virgins. Well, he said five were wise and five were foolish. They that were wise not only took, took their lamp, but they bought vessels of oil. They bought oil in their vessels. Well, the wise, the foolish, only took their vessels and the little bit that was on the inside. But there come a time when their oil ran out and they asked of the wise, give, give us so we we'll all have some. Yeah. And the wise said, uh huh, not today we're not. We're going to have, we're going to, have to use what we got. You go and purchase some. So while they were going to purchase, the Bible said the bridegroom came and he announced the wedding is getting ready to start. So they all went in and the bridegroom shut the door. And those who were on the outside who did not have the oil began to knock and he said, depart because I don't even know you. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, it's getting late in the evening day of life and I have to tell somebody, you need to make sure that your oil is in your vessel. And your lamp is still and burning. You got to be ready when that time comes. I don't know when it's going to come, but how many can thank God that I'm ready? When it comes to that point, that pinnacle of time, I got to be wise about the times that I live where people are getting shot and laying left, laying dead on the street. I got to be wise. 
wise about my time. I got to be wise about my when, when people don't have an understanding of what life is all about. When people don't take no thought of killing somebody and, and taking their life, not realizing as you do this, it's going to come right back to you one day. You got a generation that are watching video games or sports shooting each other, thinking that if I go out here and do the same in the street, that I, I can, uh, it, I, it'll say, won't say game over. But I got to tell you one thing. Just like Hebrews 9 and 27 says, as it is important unto man once to die. And after this, the judgment. You've got a judgment coming after this. So you've got to be ready for that time. So when we look at the, the understanding here, he said, don't, 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 under, don't get to the point of being like a fool. You've got to walk circumspectly. That means you've got to walk upright and redeem the time. Because the days are evil. The times that we live in is not the, to the point the change of time that 2020 is evil. It's the people that live in this time. Yeah, yeah. I wish I had a witness today. And you see, Brother George, it wasn't to the point he was talking to folk on the street corner. He was talking to the folk in the church. And sometimes it gets dangerous on the inside of the congregation. Yeah. Because folk don't have an understanding of what God mandated for their life. That means they're going to take God's will out of their, out of understanding and walk in ignorance. Yeah. When you alone and understand the will of God, you've got to understand this is not my mission. Mm -hmm. This is the Lord's mission. Yeah. And whatever he deems necessary, it will come my way. That's why when he said redeem the time, there are things we've got to do to redeem the time and understand what the will of the Lord is. He said don't be unwise, but understanding what the Lord, will of the Lord is and be not drunk wherein is excess. But be filled with the Spirit. We don't talk about being filled with the Spirit no more. Sometimes we'll bypass that and folks say, I got a feeling everything is going to be all right. Well, you, what is that feeling? You got to know for yourself it's the Holy Spirit that let me know everything is going to work out all right. Some people have known to the point of understanding that I'm going on a hunt. I'm going on a notion. Something told me. Well, I want to know who told me everything is going to be all right. When he told me everything is going to be all right, I've got to be assured of it. It may not feel right. It may not look right. It may not even act right. But I've got to know all things work together for the good to them that love God. I've got to know that. I've got to know that personally. I can't wait for somebody to tell me. I've got to know that personally. That means I've got to know. Don't, don't get to the point. And I'm so glad the Apostle Paul used the point of drinking. Don't be filled with wine. Where is it sense? Uh -huh. Don't you get to the point, man, what he allows you to understand that man is spiritual warfare. Uh -huh. That oftentimes when you drink, uh -huh. yeah. you begin to enhance a spirit uh -huh. that controls your whole body. Uh -huh. huh? You begin to take in some things that make you act like you normally don't act. Uh -huh. Where is that sense? But he said, be filled with the Spirit. That means when the Holy Spirit takes his accord, it don't mean that you're turning over benches, ripping up pews. It don't mean that you're dancing all the time. But being filled with the Spirit means allowing the Holy Spirit to govern you. Being filled with the Spirit. How many times do I need a feeling? Every time I'm running low, I need a feeling. How many times do you feel your car? Every time you run low. Or somebody will be standing on the side of the street. But how many know, even as a Christian, that I see folks that sit on the sidelines all the time. Talk about it. I'm waiting for the spirit to move. Honey, you got the same spirit I got. Yeah. If he's moving in you, you ought to God be moving in me. That's why we've got to understand and understand what the feeling of the spirit means. It means to not allow myself to be filled with a spirit. But filled with the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That means I've got to learn who's controlling me. Yeah. 
who's leading me in all aspects of life. So for me to understand or redeem the time, I got to learn to speak to myself and talk with, to myself in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and, and making melody in your heart. How many had to understand sometimes what I'm going through? I learned that even in my praise is a weapon against what the enemy is trying to do in my life. I learned to give God a praise when things are not going well. Sister Horace, I can't wait for the organ to play. Sometimes I can't take them around in my car with me. I gotta know I got a song in my own heart. I got to encourage my own self and say, self, God is in control. That no matter how things are looking, I got a right to understand that God has a way that is mighty sweet. How many can look down the aisle and tell the neighbor, neighbor, I got a feeling and it's from the Holy Spirit that everything is going to be all right. When I've learned to have a song on my heart,
making song in here. Spiritual song, making melody in my heart. Not only that, but give thanks. Giving thanks for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus. When I look at all the things, not only that, I've got to learn to submit. Submitting is a, is a dangerous word in our time. It means to humble yourself. Yeah, yeah. It means to humble and come under subjection. Yeah. And sometimes we, we want to use this as a key or tool to rule over somebody. Mm. I'm glad that God gives us the understanding when you humble yourself. He said in due time, yeah. he'll exalt you. How many know that the key to God raising me up is how low I can humble myself? Yeah. How many grateful today to know that it's in humility that God exalts me. Yeah. He brings me to understand that everything won't look good. But he lets me know that even in my position of life, that I've got to learn I can't have no room for foolishness. I can't have no room for other, for, for things that don't mean nothing. I've got to find myself redeeming the time. And when I redeem the time, I've got to know that God, he's on his way back. And he's not only coming back, but he's looking for a church without spot or wrinkle or any such thing. He's looking for that body of people that are ready to be with him because they redeem the carols of time and understand that time is winding up. Mom McFarlane, they used to tell me in a little old song, it's getting late in the evening day of life and the sun is going down. You better get your house in order today. that are coming today. Redeem the time. Understand what time it is. And I'm not just talking about the time that you look at your want. I'm talking about the time that God wants the best out of you. And no, only I got a few minutes. And it may be a minute few minutes of life. But whatever I have all to you. But I redeem the time. I don't find myself getting up me. I find myself speaking to myself in song. Baby. Give my own self a song. Don't wait for ghosts to play. Sing your own song. You know God has a way that he is by to speak. Not only that, be thankful. Be thankful for what God has given you. And how do I show up thankful? 
for just realizing every now and then it's good to look up. Yes. Say, Lord, I thank you. It, it doesn't have to be nothing spectacular going on. But just what I thank you. Thank you that I got peace of mind. Thank you that I got a little bit of reasonable help. Thank you, Lord. Thank you that I got I got a spouse that cares. Thank you that I got a family that cares about me. Thankful. Whatever you got, be thankful for it. And when you're thankful for it, pray for it. That God will, will, will bless you. He can't trust you with that little bit. What makes you think he's going to give you more? But the best thing that we come to a point where we humble ourselves and subject ourselves to each other. Brothers and sisters, we all we got. All right. Let, 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 let me spoil, spell that out with you. Let me help you out. It's bad when you better to folk in the church than you are somebody at the house. Or vice versa, you better at the house than you are the folk within your own country. I don't know about them folks over there. Well, you in the same place. We all in the same place. And if we aim to get where God wants us to be, God wants us to walk together. We can't get nothing apart from one another. And that's why the Apostle Paul wrote and penned this church in Ephesus to understand the only way you can get or allow the Lord to know you're thankful is the way we serve one the way we serve, the way we're able to take care of one another is our testimony to God, Lord, I thank you for my brother and sister in Christ. You can't get past me and think you got to go to heaven. Can I say that again? Don't think you're going to send your way into heaven. Ain't going to happen. The way we serve the Lord That's how God affects the walk of the Christian. I don't know about you, but I need you. I need you. I need you. I say that again. I need you. And you need me. And when we walk together, God can do great things. When we walk together, God can do great things. Some things we don't understand. We can't take advantage of. But we got to. 
strengthen us where we stand.
Sunday School. We invite you to join us on Thursday evenings for our prayer at 7.30. All the information you need can be found on our website. And certainly if God is leading you to sow it to the ministry, you can do so by visiting the app that is www.givelify. We thank God for you and we pray that God's blessings will forever be upon you. And we thank God for those of you have, who have committed your lives to Christ on today. Thank God that you were blessed through this word. We know that the word said it will not return back unto him void. So we know that you have been blessed. Will you pray with me? 